working on this chiller startup and while we were getting ready or actually while we were going into the startup process we were having some trouble with it surging which we expected initially a little bit at least and we had it running on pump out overnight but when we came in this morning the suction line temperature here on the pump out was actually looking pretty good it wasn't showing any issues any reason for concern but yet we were still surging as though we had a lot of atmosphere in the system and I just, I was struggling because I wasn't seeing that reflected in what my purge was doing because, well, if I actually had that much atmosphere where I couldn't even run my minimum current set point of like say 40%, then I shouldn't have had such a high, like I was running 70 degrees on my suction. And I did verify that my uh, actual suction line temperature probe is reading accurate enough. It's, a, it's, it's within a couple of degrees and good enough for what I'm doing right now. It's not my main issue. But something else that stood out to me, my metering valve up top there was, was freezing over really bad and my liquid line temp here wouldn't even get down to the ambient in the room, which means it was still fairly warm and I was not kicking out any warm air out of the purge condenser. So I go through all the steps, I verify flow balancing on the chiller barrels themselves, and ultimately I'm coming down to what my purge is telling me is not what my chiller is saying is actually happening. I want to say thank you to today's video sponsor, which is CSG, Compressor Solutions Group, based out of Houston, Texas. They've also got a shop in DFW serving the Texas area, and they also can provide you compressor service nationally. They're a great group of guys. They've done a really good job with just getting their information out there. They try to really invest into training in this industry and just supporting the contractors. Reach out to Jake with any questions you have. He'll be able to take care of you, be able to help you out. They do full service and rebuilds on screw compressors and semi-hermetic recips. They've been a great friend of the channel. They've been a great friend of mine. I look forward to working with them for a long time to come. Now, ice up here on the metering valve doesn't bother me as long as we're having a pump, regular pump out condition. So like we just kicked into a pump out, fan spinning, and I know that we've got a lot of atmosphere in here now that we're dealing with, and I've got a cold suction. This is perfectly fine. What bothered me was having a 70 degree suction, but a block of ice up here as though we were going into a heavy pump out, something wasn't right there. Now these machines are not meant to be regular service like you would do anything else. You know, you, you, you troubleshoot it based off of temperatures and its conditions. And then you only use this pressure tap when it's time to say service the machine. So in our example, it, the question became, is this even functioning properly? Now this takes 0.6 pounds of 404A. Thankfully the customer had some on site. When you run into a scenario like this, it can sometimes make more sense to just, you know what? It's questionable. It's just over half a pound worth of total charge. Let's go ahead, let's start from scratch. So we pulled the charge out of it, pull the vacuum down on the circuit and put fresh refrigerant back in. Since doing that, our suction line is now consistently running down into the, the freezing point, We're fluctuating on the compressor suction temperature. Right now it's on the upswing, but it swings up to about between 40 to 60 degrees, and then it'll come back down into the negatives, and it'll do it fairly rapidly where prior to that, we were maintaining at 70 to 75, and we weren't even dropping below 70 to allow us to go into a pump out. Knowing that my charge is okay, I know that at this point, it's gotta be an issue with the refrigerant. I think that was the correct call. It's a very tricky thing to troubleshoot because you have to think about what's causing your surge condition, and you have to basically rule everything else out first. You shouldn't just jump straight to that purge unit being the main issue. A lot of times those suction sensors do completely fail and that could be a major problem. At this stage, I need to let the pump out run for another day or two. Just give it some time to do its job and try to get more atmosphere out of here. The refrigerant that came out of here was already fairly contaminated due to leaks. And we had to go through a very extensive dehydration process just to get the moisture that was left in the system before we even put the old refrigerant back in. We did try to clean the old refrigerant as much as possible, but ultimately there's only so much you can do, especially with low pressure. 
without getting really, really expensive or essentially just about replacing the charge that's in there, which can be an option if that's what you need. This isn't an easy thing to diagnose and there's lots of steps you should go through before just saying, hey, it's bad, chunk the charge, throw in some fresh stuff. Because it's not that often that these are a problem. And something I didn't mention, we did end up doing a leak search on this before we pulled the charge out. So make sure you do that too, because these can form leaks. But I think what happened here is I didn't find a leak and I didn't have issues with my vacuum. I'm pretty confident somebody was hooking gauges to it at some point. And that process of hooking up a gauge releases enough of that charge that as it gets low on charge, it can also fractionate because that port is a vapor port. So between getting low and fractionization, you end up just with a, a system that just won't function. And because of that, you're not gonna get your atmosphere out properly and that's gonna hurt you on the chiller itself. 